Good evening, friends. Meeting after a gap of four or five days, big gap. Uh, Friday, I was, I was not there. And yesterday also, I have to go to Nasik. So it was not possible to conduct two sessions. So it's a big gap, but still, we'll continue with our sessions of organ of medicine. <laughs> and we, have dis we are discussing the pharmaceutical parts in the organ of medicine. And we have reached up to the aphorism number 269. The aphorism number 269, where he has mentioned how Hanuman have reached to the concepts of dynamization. He was the first person who has introduced this by practical application of it. The inherent properties of the crude substances, how it should come, it, it can be utilized for the human being by the process of trituration and succussion. And this is just a scientific method which he has developed. He has utilized his knowledge of physics, he has utilized his knowledge of chemistry as well as mathematics. So the things are very clear in his mind when he developed the methods of potentization and succussion. Basically, he came out with the first the decimal scale uh, with which he has introduced to the world exactly the potentization method. But later, at his last phase of life, he reached to the this new method of utilizing medicines that is what is called as a LM scale or 50 millisimal scale and that which we have to learn from tomorrow. There are three footnotes which which are very important to this paragraph which we have to learn today. On that day we have discussed only the aphorism number 269 where we have learned regarding his concept about the development of medicinal powers, the dynamization and how medicine becomes dynamized. How <clears throat> even we have learned about the Avogadro's hypothesis and we have learned about all those concepts, the material medicine, the semi-dynamic medicine and dynamic medicine, all those concepts which we have learned. Let us start with the aphorism, uh, aphorism number 269, first footnote to it, that is footnote number 146. What he says, long before this discovery of mine, Experience had taught several changes which could be brought about in different natural substances by means of friction. For instance, warmth, heat, fire, development of odor in orderless body, magnetization of steel and so forth. So what he's saying, he was, he was the first one who has started utilizing this method. He has introduced the method of potentization. But there were methods where people were trying to utilize the dynamic aspects. Some people, they used to use the friction and with friction, the patient feels better. There was a method of applying the heat and the person feels better. Sometimes some specific magnetized steels or iron rods, they were utilizing. And that was the method of utilizing the dynamic energy in order to treat the patient. But what he says, but all these properties produced by friction were related only to the physical and inanimate things. Whereas it is a law of nature according to which the physiological and pathogenetic changes take place in the body's condition by means of forces capable of changing the crude material or of drug, even in such as had never shown any medicinal properties. And this is brought about by the trituration and succussion but under the condition of employing an in indifferent vehicle in certain proportion. So he has introduced something more than that, something more than friction, something more than applying the heat. Because those things, applying the heat, utilizing the friction, utilizing the pressure, it used to work material. It never used to use, uh, work exactly dynamically as anyone have told or utilize. And that's what the new introduction was there. He started first the method of trituration. And again, while doing the trituration, he has made it so clear that what should be the proportion of the medicine along with the saccolac. Then how much time it should be triturated. 
then how to collect what what type of pot one should use the porcelain the mortar how how one can utilize how the 20 minutes every time how it should be done everything was scientific everything was mathematical so even any person who used to do that succussion or trituration method you used to produce the similar result similar type of medicine and that's why it was very specific. Second important thing which he has utilized, that he has utilized the vehicle which is very important, which itself doesn't carry any medicinal properties and which carries the medicinal properties in that vehicle, keep it as it is and utilize for the purpose of medication. He has utilized the first, the saclac, it is a lactose sugar in order to preserve the properties of medicine. At the same time, he has utilized the alcohol as a medium in order to maintain the properties in the in that specific vehicle. And this was his own discovery. This was his own understanding because of having the knowledge of chemistry as well as physics. This is brought about by trituration and succussion, but under the conditions of employing an indifferent vehicle in certain proportions. This wonderful physical and especially physiological and pathogenic law of nature had not been discovered before my before my time. And this, this law, that is the applying the medicine on law of similars, in such a manner, in a dynamic manner, no one have done before anyone. He was the first person to introduce this specific way of utilizing the medicine and utilizing medicine in dynamic form. And that's that's the credit goes to really goes to the animal. No wonder then that the present student of nature, present students of nature and physician so far unknown cannot have faith in the mag mag magical curative powers of minute doses of medicine prepared according to the homeopathic rules, that is dynamite. And the people who used to practice at that time were materialist. They were allopaths using the larger doses of the medicine. He, when he introduced this method to the world, to the medical world, it was very difficult for them that how a medicine becomes a dynamic or dynamite. They never able to understand all those concepts. And it is still today, uh, till today, it is the problem for allopaths to accept the reality of the homeopathic minute dose because they have the habit of using the medicine in larger dose. There is always a material dose, 500 milligram, 1000 milligram, 2 gram. All those doses are there and those are very large doses which they either give orally, either injects, either give hypodermically. All those methods were there, but those were very larger doses. They were not able to accept how much this small dose will going to do any magical work. And that, that was the thing which Hanuman introduced. Then he, he explains exactly what, what happens in dynamics in order to know the medical fraternity exactly. So he explains with one example in 147, what he says. The same thing is seen in the bar of iron and steel, where a slumbering trace of latent magnetic force cannot but be recognized in, the, in, in their interior. Both after their completion by means of force stand up right, repulse the north pole of magnetic needle, with the lower end and attract the south pole, while the upper end end shows itself as the south pole of magnetic needle. But this is only a latent force. Not even the finest iron particles can be drawn magnetically or held on either end of such a bar. So he is explaining that how this dynamicity and dynamic force you have to understand. He gives simple example of magnetic bar. Uh, uh, when you put or when this this experiment we have done many a times in childhood, what we have done we have taken a magnet piece, then another magnet piece or iron piece, and we have um, 
uh, we have just put that iron piece at one side and we brought that magnet near to it. With one end, it gets attracted to it. We keep it as some for some time. And after some time, that magnetic needle, um, that iron needle itself catches the properties of the magnetic needle. Even it never touches to it, it also carries the magnetic power. Then and then the people understood there is a magnetic field which develops around that magnetic rod. Then people understood, understood that there is a magnetic field which is invisible to the human naked eye and that energy catches that iron needle, develops its own properties over there in that iron needle, even sometimes without touching to that needle. Anyone gives this example? That here you also never able to catch the exact energy pattern because it is not visible to naked eye. But still, on the basis of cause and effect, you understood that and you have labeled it that it is called as a magnetic energy. Hanuman gives this example in order to tell you that if you are accepting this, you have to accept the homeopathic medicine, which also works in the similar manner where the medicine is so minute, still it carries the energy and when you give it to the healthy human being, it produces its typical properties. Or if you give it to the deceased human being on the principle of law of similar, it again works as a curative agent and then you have to um, give the credit to the homeopathic medicine on the basis of cause and effect. Then you have to understand it carries really a energy inside you. It carries an energy, a vital energy, because of which the vital energy, disturbed vital energy of the patient disappears and it carries the vital energy from the medicine and it recovers. So, in order to explain his thought regarding the dynamization, he tried, he has taken the example of magnet. Then what he says, only after this bar of the steel is dynamized, rubbing it over the, rubbing it with a dull file in one direction, will it become a true active powerful magnet, one able to attract iron and steel to itself and impart to the another bar of steel by mere contact and even some distance away, magnetic power. And this is a higher degree, the more it has been rubbed. In the same way, with saturating a medicinal substance and shaking it, or shaking up its solution, dynamization, potentization, develop the medicinal powers hidden within and manifest them more and more. And or if one may say to spiritualizes the material substance itself. So he takes the example of magnet. How one magnet sends the property, magnetic properties to the another iron piece and makes another magnet in the similar manner the homeopathic medicine by in that either by trituration or succussion brings about a curative properties of that medicinal substance in the patient. So both of them have a dynamic hidden energy. Both of them we have to understand only on the basis of cause and effect. You cannot show exactly what is the dynamic pattern. You cannot show the energy. And this is, this is the, in fact, reality one has to understand. That requires the homeopathic mind. That requires the spiritual mind to understand and accept the things on the basis of cause and effect. The same thing, another example is there that whenever there is a moon energy in the period of full moon or new moons basically, there is a changes in the and in the levels of the sea. That those happens to be there because because of the magnetic, uh, in fact, gravitational energy of the moon. The in between medium you cannot find it out, but scientists have given credit that it happens because of the gravitational force of the moon, on the basis of cause and effects only. Animal says in the similar manner. Homeopathic medicines, you have to understand the power of homeopathic medicines on the basis of cause and effects only. 
you cannot show how it works, where it goes, where it gets absorbed, how it travels, how it produces cure. Because all those things are invisible. They are beyond the power of naked human eye, which you cannot localize. This. And that's why one, when one has to understand the dynamics, one has to understand it on the basis of cause and effect soon. And then the roots of administration, which he explains over there, the footnote number 148. Again, he explains the root of administration of medicine. On this account, it refers only to the increase and stronger development of their power to cause changes in the health of the animals and men if these natural substances in this improved state are brought very near to the living sensitive fiber or come in contact with it by means of intact or olfaction. So either you give it by oral, either you just give a smell of it by the process of olfaction, your medicine works. The energy which is there in that medicine, the properties which are there, they immediately starts working. It is like a magnet. So homeopathic medicine carries the dynamic energy and which can be transferred by given it orally, by intake or even by olfaction. Just as a magnetic bar, especially if its magnetic force is increased, dynamized, can show magnetic power only in a needle of steel whose pole is near and touches it. So he compares it with magnetic power. In the similar manner, when you give the homeopathic medicine to the patient, it starts working. It starts, starts showing its own property. So once you put a medicine, one drop of medicine in the mouth, it starts working. It starts showing its property. So he, he tries to explain, even though it doesn't carry crude medicinal substance in it, it starts working because it carries the properties, it can carries the energy. The steel itself remains unchanged in the remaining chemical and physical properties and can bring about no changes on the, in their, on the other metals. For instance, in brass, just as little as dynamic medicine can have any action upon the lifeless thing. So he is again comparing it with the homeopathic medicine. He says that the steel remains steel. It never gets changed when you transfer the medicinal properties or magnetic properties into that by keeping the magnet nearby. In the similar manner, when you use the homeopathic medicine inside the human being, human being, when you give that medicine through a either by infection or either by um, oral route, it starts working in the similar manner. So it starts showing its own properties over there. And then the human being, where the vital force, which is during disturb, again <clears throat> comes into a normal because it is used on the basis of law of similar. The principle is very important over here. Unless you get very specific homeopathic principle, it will not going to show its effects. It needs exactly the homeopathic principle to be utilized. Then and then, this saturated or succussed medicine will going to show its effects. So this whole aphorism, along with three footnotes, he has tried his level best to express, explain the dynamicity in the homeopathic medicine and how it works. Once you understand it, you try to show it to the medical world. Tell them, yes, this medicine works in this manner. How it carries the properties in the dynamic form, the energy in the dynamic form. Here you have to explain the science behind that. Here you have to explain that by, make, by, make, making, uh, by utilizing a method of trituration and by you doing a succussion. You, when you apply force externally and you start dividing the medicinal substance in a um, progressing manner, you do a nuclear division of the atom, releasing the energy. And that releasing energy is nothing but bringing out the properties, medicinal properties, which were hidden inside that medicine. And that works beautifully on the basis of law of similar. And those 
never causes any material damage to the patient. Those works at the level of functions and functional, it never used to produce pathology directly. And because of which, it never produces any type of damage, pathological damage to the human life. So this wonderful method of making a crude material into activity introduced by Hanuman, and he tried to explain the concept of trituration and succussion or potentization and dynamization of medicine in this big aphorism 269. And then in the 2670, he turns to explain new method which introduced, which he introduced in this sixth edition of organ of medicine related with the LM scale or which is called as 50 millisecond scale. So today we have finished three footnotes related with this aphorism number 269. Tomorrow we'll continue with the next aphorism and we have to understand exactly the 50 millisecond scale and utilization of 50 millisecond scale in future two, three lectures. And in fact, which is the most essential part of today's homeopathic practice. Because we are getting off and on the pathologies you now. And to treat the pathologies, the basically we must utilize proper weapons. 50 millisecond scale is one of the weapons without causing any damage to the patient's life or pathology. It works in a mild way and that we have to understand in next two, three lectures. So that's all for today. Tomorrow we're going to start with that. If any queries are there, we'll have a chat. Otherwise, we'll finish the today session. Sir? Any question? Yes, sir. sir? Yes. Uh, what is uh, you, you, uh, if I am not uh, if I am correct? Mm -hmm. Mother tincture will be in material doses. Yes. Okay. Uh, up to twelve C or twenty four X, it is a semi dynamic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then right. after twenty four X or twelve C, it becomes a dynamic stage. Huh. Huh. Okay, uh, from where uh, after mother teacher, from where uh, the material uh, uh, do, dose stops and the semi dynamic range starts? Huh? Basically, when we start doing it, uh, uh, dynamization from making either if we are using the centesimal scale, we used to use the one part of medicinal substance with 99 parts of the vehicle. So what we are doing, we are making it fine. But in we are preparing, we used to give the 100 succussions. For example, we are preparing a liquid medicine. So one part of medicinal substance plus 99 part of the alcohol and we used to give the 100 succussions. And we prepare the first 1C potency. In that 1C potency, if we utilize the present methods of finding it out, the original medicinal substance, there are many more. We have to, we have to learn the um, physics and chemistry in order to understand different methods of finding it out, the medicinal substance in that. Uh, if we utilize that, we understand that there is a medicinal substance still present. But what has happened now? We, we have made it so fine that it entered into a molecular phase now. So, partly it has carried a dynamic property. Partly it has, you have given succussions to it. We have applied the force. We have you made it so small. So, a method of dynamization has started. So, it is not still completely dynamic because we are able to find it out the material substance inside it. So in the similar manner, when you go ahead by taking one part of the um, one C potency, again adding 99 parts of the vehicle, and we go ahead at a 12 C potency, till 12 C potency, there are certain methods like a, uh, called as chromatography or many more are there 
uh, which is not part and parcel of our study. That's why it is not, I know, I don't know exactly, but it has been mentioned that when you reach 12C and go beyond 12C, you cannot find it out, locate medicine over there. Till that period, you are able to locate it by different methods. So still, the 3C potency, 6C potency, it, it produces or it works on the basis of law of similar. It used to produce its own effect. So here, you are having a medicine which contains the molecules of medicines. At the same time, it contains the dynamic energy. So that is called a semi-material or semi-dynamic medicine. And when you reach both the 12 C, then it becomes then it starts called as a dynamic where because you are not able to find it out, that becomes nano part of it. And they, those are very difficult to find it out by any methods. And that's why homeopathic medicine in a modern era also called as a nano medicine because we are not able to reach to that level. So this, this is what is the my understanding regarding the potencies and powers. Same is true when you prepare it in decimal scale. Or if you make it trituration, 1x, 2x, 3x. Those are uh, generally a semi-dynamic till it reaches 24x. You are able to find it out original medicinal substance till 24x. So a material, exactly full material medicine, gradually becomes semi-material, semi-dynamic, and in this way, it develops its own properties, reducing the original medicinal substance inside it. So this, this is what is called as making a crude material to the dynamic material, and in between stages, in between potencies, called as semi-dynamic potency. So this is what uh, my understanding about the potentization and dynamization is there. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Is there any other query? So, we'll conclude today's session. Tomorrow, we'll continue with the same and we'll learn much more what Dr. Samuel Hanneman wants to tell about the 50 millisimal scale. So thanks being there and we'll conclude the session.